afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to the channel. If you're a subscriber, and if you are new to the channel, I appreciate you watching my videos. So anyway guys, subscribe if you haven't yet, so you don't miss out with my weekly uploads. My name is Bernie Hippos, and today, I will give you my honest thoughts regarding the PS5. Is it really a next-gen console? How about the games? The graphical power? And finally, is it worth 499 US dollars? Join me in today's honest review of the PS5. Hey guys, right now let's start off this review with this DualSense controller. This one's really nice and feels good in the hands, guys. The adaptive controls, the haptic feedback alone are amazing, especially when playing the Astros Playroom, and I highly recommend that for you to be able to utilize the best potential of this DualSense controller, and really worth the money if you ask me. I really think that this controller makes the game more immersive because you feel, you hear a little bit of uh, the vibrations, haptic feedback, and you really feel it. And then this one, basically, when you press this, like for example, when I'm playing NBA 2K21, if the player gets tired, this one is kind of hard to press. This one's like, uh, when I press it, it's like, uh, it's hard, really. There's this resistance. So it's good, and it's a game changer when you play. Honestly, guys, this is the best controller that I have ever had. But it's not perfect because let me show you my PS4. Dual shock controller. I like the feel of the dual shock controller way, way better. Because when I hold it like this, right? Here, it's like complete. It feels so good in my hands. Just perfect. But then again, this one, because of the shape, it's like there's something missing. When I put my grip, my three fingers on my right, as well as on my left, it's like there's something missing here. See? Look at the distance from here to here. But if you use the PS4 dual shock, See, there's a little bit of space here, and it feels better in my hands than this one. This DualSense controller gives me a little bit of uh, fatigue. So yeah, that's the only drawback here. Now let's move on to the main body here. The design, I think it's really bold. It's bigger and quiet, and I think it's a really well thought out design. The attention to detail that Sony put into it. You can see all of the icons, small icons embedded to the main panels here. Like here in the inside with the Sony logo as well as here. But I said a while back that I'm really not a fan of the design but it grew on me. Since this PS5 with its bold design like this fits perfectly on my standing desk, which is white as well. But if you have any other uh, table, like maybe this type of table, maybe it will not fit with the color of the table and the color and the design of the PS5. So luckily, I got the standing table way, way back and now I put it there and it blends in with my table. And I really think that the best position for this one is standing up since number one, you save space. And now I know the reason why Sony did this design is for you to be able to notice it right away. It's like screaming, look at me, look at me on the PS5. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> and I think at the same time, Sony really did that on purpose. But yeah, it grew on me already. Also guys, to add to the overall design, you can't easily lay this flat or lay this horizontally. You still have to unscrew the plate and store it in this bottom plate. And then you just turn it around and put it horizontally, and then you can attach the bottom plate. And it will look like this one. Also guys, another thing that I like with this PS5 is the accessibility in the back. So I will show you right now. Easy access when you put all of the cables. Man, it's really amazing. See here, you can easily put the power cable here, HDMI, Ethernet, and two USB-A cables. So how about that, huh? On the PS4, it's kind of hard. You really have to feel the side and you have to angle it a little bit and look at the back for you to be able to plug all the necessary cables in the back. Whereas here, you can just feel it sometimes. But yeah, you have to really put it a little bit angled and plug it in, but it's easier. Way, way easier in my opinion. Also, the side plates are easily removable as you can see in this video from uh, Sony. I haven't tried it though, 
because I don't want to mess it up. Maybe in the future, I want to paint uh, both sides or maybe put uh, some stickers here just for a change. But who knows? Maybe, just maybe. <laughs> now moving on with the hard drive. What's inside? Sony did a good job in putting an SSD here so to make it really quick. Just like when I'm loading Spider-Man Miles Morales. You know, one time when I was playing the Spider-Man, I was doing some stuff and I just uh, put the disc in and I was trying to load it the first time. So I loaded it in and I was doing some stuff, looking at my DualSense controller and fixing my headphones, plugging it into the controller and voila, <laughs> it's already done and ready to play. Wow, that quick guys, so it's really good. I think Sony did an amazing job in going with the faster SSD. The faster load times alone makes it worth it. You no longer have to wait for the games to load and it's almost instantaneous. It is that amazing. Also, my capture card can't do the PS5 justice guys since it's only outputting 1080p footage. But it's not that bad and that's what I have at the time of the recording of this gameplay. But if you will see it in action, Definitely, it looks so good. Next is ray tracing. So it's basically, you'll see more detail in the shadows. Like in this example we're in, you can see Spider-Man very clearly in front of the mirror or in front of the window glass. So it's really nice having that ray tracing feature because it makes the game so immersive and it feels like you are there and you're Spider-Man. So it's really nice. And also the environment, you can see a lot of uh, puddles, the water. And you can see all of the reflections, especially of the characters in the game. Now moving on, the backwards compatibility with most of the PS4 games. So Sony announced that most of the PS4 games are compatible with the PS5. Just like this game, The Ghost of Tsushima, we're in, you can see that it's playing smoothly and I didn't change to 60 FPS because I think that it's weird when I play games with 60 FPS, the movement is too smooth for me. I like the cinematic feel when I play the game. I really think that the PS5 has the best user interface among all of the PlayStation consoles. I mean, it's definitely better than the PS4 Pro, but there's one annoying thing is that you can really turn this off by just clicking the PS button right here. You can't do that. You still have to go to the icons below, as you can see in the video right now, to turn it off or when you press and hold it, it will go directly to the home screen. I mean, it's not a big of a deal, but to be honest, it would be nice if you can do it after pressing the PS button like that and not going to another step and looking for the icon in the bottom. Also moving on with one more con is that SSD capacity is not a lot. I mean, the games you load here will definitely fill up the space as quick <laughs> as it loads. <laughs> Out of the box guys, it has 825 gig and you can't replace or upgrade your SSD just yet. So please correct me if I'm wrong, if this is not the case. So what are my final thoughts for this PS5 review? It is really a next-gen console and I'm glad I bought one. It's awesome, especially the fidelity mode in Spider-Man's Miles Morales, wherein you can enable ray tracing. Enable ray tracing meaning you'll be able to see more details in the shadows, just like I said earlier, and the surroundings looking more realistic. As you can see again at this example, where you see Spider-Man in front of the mirror with a very detailed reflection of himself. I have my PS5 plugged into a Hisense 4K TV with HDR on and I have been using the same TV for my PS4 Pro. Although I definitely recommend the PS5 if you're coming from the original or the regular PS4 which is not 4K. Since it's a really big jump graphics wise. Not only that, the faster SSD, the faster load times which is really fast and quite amazing. But if you already own a PS4 Pro, I would say to just hold off for now. Maybe upgrade a year later, once there are a lot of games available. That would be the best time I think to grab one, if and only if you can get one since these are sold out everywhere. Once more games are out, we will definitely see big improvements with the games utilizing the DualSense controllers feature, which is the adaptive triggers as well as the haptic feedback. But if you think the adaptive triggers, haptic feedback of the DualSense controller, the faster SSD and load times, and the overall power of the PS5 as well as the look of the console are worth it to you, then by all means, buy one today. How about the price? I think it's priced well for $4.99 US dollars and I got this version mainly because I never hold on to any game for so long. So once I'm done with the game and the story, I just go to EB Games and I just trade it in to a new game, which I think is a good way 
in saving some cash. Yeah, let me tell you that games are not cheap. That's why I choose my games very carefully. Anyway guys, with all of the bells and whistles that Sony crammed in here, as well as this DualSense controller, its features and capabilities, I really think that the price is just right. Overall, in my case, since I was able to pre-order one, I have no regrets of getting it and replacing my PS4 Pro. It is just that I have to really be patient and wait for the games that interest me, as well as give this a chance to prove itself more. Before I know it, there will be a lot of games available that will definitely utilize the full potential of this DualSense controller with its adaptive triggers and haptic feedback. And maybe my final take will change once they become available. There you go guys, that's my honest review of the PS5. If you ever find this video helpful, just give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as well as hit that bell notification button to be notified with more awesome videos. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Bernie Hemos. I will see you again in the next video. Goodbye for now.